in my book Schematics 2 I have published on page 16 a schematic of a frequency meter and in that frequency meter I used an analog meter and I used a uh, frequency divider and that's a circuit uh, to which I want to pay more attention now. It is TTL logic, transistor to transistor logic, perhaps somewhat obsolete, but anyway it worked good. And this is that complete schematic and I only want to pay now attention to one of the first dividers. This is the first divider by 10 and here another one and another one. So this goes on and on and on so that when you study the complete uh, schematic you can see that uh, the first divider divides by 10, the second one by 100, etc. etc. Of course it also divides by 10 but the effect is 10 uh, 100 etc etc and the interesting thing is that there's also here a first stage that has to drive that TTL uh, frequency divider so and this is that first stage I made it with a BC547B classical um, um, NPN transistor and I found that it worked up until up unto uh, 20 megahertz. There are more things to tell about this first stage. So let's at first look at the say circuit on the breadboard that's here. Of course it's a breadboard circuit. This is the power supply. I don't want to pay much attention to that. Uh, I've made say uh, power supply that is quite coarse and with coarse I mean that I can uh, say uh, put up the the input voltage to 20 volts or so and it even gives out 5 volts and 5 volt is say the necessary voltage for TTL logic and this is by the way the power supply you can of course also use the classical 7805 regulator. Uh, I don't know how uh, say how much voltage such a 7805 can withstand on its input. You can surely find it on the World Wide Web. Say it looks like one of the This is a power 7805 and there are also um, 7805 types that look a little bit like this. Anyway, um, the power supply again. It's here on the breadboard. Here is the Zener diode, that, that blue one here. Three uh, <coughs> uh, normal silicon diodes do the job to lift up that Zener voltage to the right output voltage. Anyway, this is the circuit where it's all about. And say uh, this frequency divider has also a first stage say a driver transistor that is that BC547B and say when all kinds of waveforms enter the base of the BC547B it acts as a kind of say pulse former um, that depends of course on the type of waveforms that the transistor gets at its base. Could be such a waveform 
or this waveform or that waveform or that one. These waveforms are more or less quite regular in their, say, uh, time domain, etc., etc. These are irregular. So uh, I cannot predict how the this uh, driver will act on waveforms that are have an irregular waveform. But anyway, when there is a kind of frequency here, be it somewhat irregular, the I found that this circuit works very good. It really can handle also, say, more complex waveforms and, say, <laughs> change them into the 0, 5 voltage that the uh, TTL logic chip uh, can work with. So, again, this overview. Uh, here the frequency in and here out the frequency divided by 10 on a logic TTL level. And uh, it's perhaps interesting to tell, you can do some experiments with this value of the first capacitor has also to do with how this first driver stage acts on different waveforms. And I found that 220 picofarad and 470 picofarad work good. Anyway, let's go to the how it works. Switch on my scope. And I have set the frequency of my generator. The generator is here. Uh, to 5 multiplied by 10 is 50 kilo cycles. <coughs> so 50,000 periods, 50 kilohertz. And when we look on the scope at the output, we see that it is really divided 10 times because we see here now 4.9 kilohertz. So, say approximately 5 kilohertz. And it's really divided. The frequency, input frequency, is divided at 10 times. So, the circuit works properly. Um, of course, you can, uh, like I told earlier, uh, use more dividers in a row, kind of a row. Circuit is here. And in the past I've made an analog uh, frequency meter uh, in this way. And there is also an analog frequency meter schematic on my YouTube channel. I will give the link. It's here. This is that analog vo uh, uh, voltage, no, frequency meter that works between uh, 20 Hertz and 19 kilo Hertz, 19 kilo cycles. But when you, of course, uh, say, send in to this um, analog frequency meter, the, uh, sorry, the frequency divider, it works up uh, to, say, 190 kilo cycles. So that's uh, a good idea to do. I, do. I did it in the past. And when you use the complete uh, set of TTL logic frequency dividers, you can go uh, to higher frequencies. Of course, you can measure higher frequencies of course, say analog uh, frequency uh, measurement is a little bit outdated nowadays. You can buy a frequency meter uh, on AliExpress or whatever for say 20 dollars, 20 euros anyway. Um, so it's all is is a kind of obsolete, but well, I think it's very interesting circuit. 
and here I have used, by the way, in that analog frequency meter the same circuit as I have used here, the driver circuit. So, pen over somewhat. I hope uh, <coughs> it was uh, a little bit useful and or interesting. And I wish you luck. Uh, I've used this 7490. The DM7490LS means low shot key 90N. Low shot key types of TTL logic were in fact quite the same uh, compared to the earlier models, say of the 1970s, 19, early 1980s. And when you want to know more about, say, what low shot key means, you can go to the World Wide Web. And a small overview again. The power supply. The output pin 12 of the 7 4 Nine zero chips. The chip itself. I've covered it with some glue to fix all the wirings. It's a breadboard circuit, etc. etc. Here that first transistor that does the job by say um, making the TTL logic chip work say giving a logic level out of a uh, say more or less undefined uh, input level and uh, more important more or less uh, undefined input waveform well that was all more or less taught